right, welcome back to another edition of Queer Prophets Podcast, where we are about three pillars. The three pillars are inclusion, community, and growth. And so I'm sure we're going to get into some of that today. I'm your host, Diane Conklin, and I am thrilled to be here today with Danielle Walter Nolan. Um, happy to have you. Thanks for giving us some time. And Danielle, go ahead and just tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yes, thanks, Diane, for having me. Um, my name's Danielle, and my wife and I um, have a few ventures that we've started. Um, we started in 2014 um, an outdoor adventure company called DNK Presents, and we organize and guide empowering outdoor adventure experiences for individuals, groups, and businesses. Um, and basically, we focus on getting people, um, uh, women specifically, or people who identify as women to step outside their comfort zone, try something new, and in turn really build confidence and empower themselves through different outdoor activities and um, experiences. So um, we do trips. Um, we're located in central Indiana, um, so we do a lot here, um, and especially this past year being more on lockdown, um, but we've also gone all over the country and, and guided um, trips as well. But we um, are wilderness guides, we're certified professional mountain bike instructors. Um, I'm also a yoga teacher. So we do a lot of, you know, anything from guided hikes, camping, backpacking to guided mountain bike clinics, camps, um, rides. And then I do some wellness retreats as well. Um, including yoga and mindfulness and meditation, um, all really tying back to the outdoors and how nature can really, um, you know, increase our overall, you know, physical, mental, and emotional health and wellness, which I think, especially right now, is something we can all benefit from. Boy, isn't that the truth, getting out? <laughs> it's funny, <clears throat> not necessarily outdoor related, but when you said that, it reminded me I was when I went to the gym last night, I got out of the car and was walking in and I saw two gals I hadn't seen in a while. And of course, me being the shy person that I am, I yelled across <laughs> the parking lot, hey, you know, and so we were chit chatting and, and just, you know, we were talking about how, you know, during this time that it's been difficult for those of us who live by ourselves, right? It's that piece of, because they were giving me a hard time. I said, I've been going back to the gym since it opened. And um, they were like, oh my gosh. And I said, look, you know, you guys both have have partners and spouses. I said, when you live alone, you know, sometimes just having somebody other than the clerk at the grocery store smile and say hello is a big deal. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So For the sure. outside thing. Yeah. You know, so it's funny. The other thing that popped in my head when you were talking about all the outdoor stuff is, you know, sort of that typical stereotypical, right. Lesbian thing where, you know, you got to be camping and you got to be, and it's funny because you know, being in the, I'm not now, but, you know, recently in the dating world, it's like, does, does everybody, does every single lesbian in the world have to hike or camp? I'm like, if you <laughs> that, if it doesn't say no, I, I ain't going, but, <laughs> but that's great. So talk a little bit about sort of how the, the outdoor adventure things that you guys do, how does that affect like that, that mindfulness piece? How does that affect the psyche of, of where people are and, and, and sort of what they're doing. Sure. I mean, I think, you know, many times, especially early on, you know, Kate and I noticed that, um, you know, and we do, we do trips for men and women, but um, mostly more women um, specific. And we um, just saw, especially more with women um, that they were having these breakthrough moments an aha moments on our trips of like, I never thought I could do this, whether it was, you know, you know, backpacking into a trail with everything they needed for the weekend on their backs and how empowering that was, or learning how to, you know, roll over a rock boulder or a rock garden on their mountain bike. And I think a lot of times people don't realize that, you know, all these things that we were doing outside really translates and correlates into their personal and professional life. And, you know, and that was one of the reasons Kate and I started our company was because we knew that all these challenges and obstacles that we had faced in the outdoors directly correlated to 
you know, our relationship and our, you know, success and happiness and quality of life. And um, I think a lot of times people and women, especially we second guess ourselves and we don't think that we can do something even, you know, just because we haven't done it before, or maybe because we haven't done it in a long time. And, you know, and it was just, it's just really um, encouraging and, and really cool to see that, you know, especially really early on that we were like, wow, like these, you know, like we're helping them. I feel like in some ways, like just change their lives and really, you know, build themselves back up and, you know, and the things that they had gone on to do, you know, whether it was just ask for a raise at work or, you know, um, I remember one lady in particular went, um, decided to take her family to, um, Colorado. And she was like, I looked up this hike and we climbed a 14 er together and I organized it. And like, you know, and, you know, uh, cause she's like, you know, usually, uh, you know, my husband like does all this stuff and I don't know, uh, you know, that much about it. And I really, you know, cause, cause part of it is that we really teach you the skills, you know, so you can feel confident and comfortable more going if you want to go on your own, or if you want to, go with your family or friends or whatever. Um, so I think that, you know, mental part of it is so powerful and, and even, you know, Kate and I didn't even realize it early on too, but we were, you know, so blessed and surprised that there were so many, I think people that were, um, surprising themselves and, uh, yeah. So it's just been, it's been an adventure. (laughs) Well, you know, I think the thing that a lot of people don't realize, you know, you take yourself everywhere you go. And so when you grow in one area of your life, you're growing somewhere else. And so when you overcome something on a hike or you overcome something on a mountain bike or you overcome a fear of, you know, I got in a kayak for the first time or whatever it is, right, that has that always affects you know, your family life, it always affects your work life, whether you own your own business or, or, or whatever. And I think as business owners, you know, we sometimes get into that sort of, I, I call it the humdrum, right? The repetition of the day to day and all of that. And we forget, or we don't challenge ourselves outside of our work because, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, geez, I'm exhausted. You know, it was a big day or we had all these challenges or whatever. But I think, when we do those things, whether it's an outdoor thing or, you know, whatever it is, whatever your thing is, right? Learning to play the guitar or, you know, going to a, an escape room. And, you know, if, if anything that you have that sort of fear or trepidation behind, once you do it, then knowing that you can do it, it that it transfers, right? That if, if I can do this and overcome this fear outside, I can certainly overcome any challenge in my life of, you know, business or health or finances or whatever that comes up. Oh yeah. It's so true. Um, we even, you know, started, um, we have a nonprofit arm and because of all these experiences, you know, we started, um, a program, it's a women's adventure giveaway, um, where we give away a trip to four, um, women, um, and every year and they have to be nominated um, and got non 501c3 status last year. That's called live adventurously is that side of it. But, um, yeah, because we saw again that, you know, that there were so many women too, that wouldn't even try something like that we were offering because they were too scared or, you know, didn't think they could do it or did maybe didn't have the funds or, you know, all of these things and barriers. And we just thought we want to do this give back. And, and through that program, we've seen just incredible, um, incredible things that these women have gone on to do. And um, that's also just so inspiring. And, and I think, yeah, it's just something that you don't think like, oh, well, I'm doing this here now, but it just directly, I mean, and we always say, when was the last time you did something for the first time and really thinking about that question and, you know, or like what you were talking about, really stepping outside your comfort zone. And we know that now through 
science and research that you really do grow when we are outside of the comfort zone, when we are a little bit uncomfortable, because we do get in our, you know, we get in our circle and we get comfortable and we are here and, you know, everything's fine. But really when we break out and when we branch out, that's when the real growth um, emerges within us. And we find things that we didn't know we could do. We do things we didn't know we had within us and um that's that's what it's all about so and we help people do it through the outdoors which is yeah. really really do you, fun. See, do you see a difference in like you know since you're since you're dealing predominantly with women do you see a difference between like the straight women and, and and gay women lesbians whatever the right word is i've always you know as i said yesterday when i was talking to somebody when i came out everybody was just gay so i didn't use <laughs> that word but um <laughs> Is there a difference in like how adventurous they are or how used to the outdoor they are or how willing they are to, you know, overcome that fear and take that challenge? Or do you, do you see it sort of as a, a that, 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 that is the case? You know, I don't really see a big difference in um, straight women and uh, gay or lesbian or queer women. Um, I think sometimes I think that, you know, that Kate and I are you know, mostly leading these trips and, and guiding these adventures. We're not on every single one, but, um, you know, we're there a lot. Um, I think there is, um, you know, when there is another family member, if you will, or, you know, lesbian, that it is, um, you know, there's, uh, I don't know, like a, maybe just like an ease or a comfort that like, we, I don't know, that we share something, you know, I think that kind of is maybe where the word like there, you know, I was just talking to somebody the other day and um, about another vendor and, and she was like, oh, and she's family, you know, and so just saying that word, I don't know if it's just like the family, because it's like, I don't know, there's just an understanding of like, you know, like, even though I don't know her story or what they've been through, um, I don't know. It's just a, uh, just a comforting feeling. Yeah. So well, I don't it's think that, it's yeah. that next level. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's that next level of, of camaraderie, right? It's that next mm -hmm. level of comfort. It's that, it's that, it's the ability to take that, to exhale, right. And say, oh my gosh, I don't have to hide. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. okay. If I use, you know, if I talk about my female partner or that I'm dating or, or, you know, that I'm married to whatever, it's that piece of, you yeah. Can release that tension of do I have to do I have to come out again? Right. It's uh, that it's it's kind yeah. of that piece, I think. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Cause there's yeah, I mean, you just never know, you know, it, wherever you are, whatever, I don't know, time it is, it seems like, yeah, there is that sometimes held tension. And then yeah, it's like the exhale of, oh yeah. It's yeah. nice to know that I, you know, like this, just there's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something you share in common and you may not know anything else about them, but that you share that thing. It's, um, it's just a little, yeah, it's comforting. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we get all kinds of, of people and um, grateful that we've, yeah, had you know, and I, I mean, people very beginner, more expert, but you know, I haven't seen any, you know, big difference in any like athletic or abilities or anything like that. But there's definitely a, a nice, uh, you know, comfort, I think when, when people know that Kate and I are married, which we don't hide. So <laughs> <laughs> good for you. So let's talk about that piece, right? So Let's talk about what it's like to work with with your wife and and the challenges that that um that that brings i've worked with a former partner for 15 years so i've got some idea of what are the biggest challenges that you find working with the person that you know that you love most in the world i think we are you know there's pros and cons i think to it all you know i'm really lucky that i get to do one of the things I love to do with my favorite person. Um, but also, you know, we, 
are really, and we're very passionate about it. Um, and I think with any, you know, entrepreneur too, it's, it's hard, I think sometimes to turn it off, like, the business side and, you know, how are we going to get through, you know, this fire, or this problem, or, you know, like what's our next step for growth and always thinking about, you know, building and how we can be better. Um, but we do care so much, but sometimes that can be stressful, you know, because we just maybe want to sit and relax um, or just like, maybe we just want to take a bike ride together. We don't want to like, you know, lead a group of people. Um, so, and I think we, um, I think we do a good job of like trying to balance that out. I mean, we promote, you know, work-life balance and we do have to remind ourselves like, you know, we've got to practice what we preach because if not, we're not going to be good for the rest of our, you know, uh, our participants. Um, and, um, and we do have an almost two year old, um, too. So that's added to the, the mix. And then I'm pregnant now too. So we'll have, we'll have another boy coming in May. So that's just another <laughs> wild thing, but I think, you know, kids add uh, like just an incredible element to your life in general, but also, you know, it's having a business too and all of that. And I think Kate and I, we handle, I think, stress a little differently, which is, can be good and bad, but I think now we both know how we work, how each other works, you know, if we are under stress and, you know, so we have a good idea of, okay, like, I'm like, I know how Kate, if she gets stressed, like, this is what, like, she's going to go through. But I think it's, it comes back to, we just have to be good communicators with each other. And, um, you know, when we bottle it all in, like that doesn't help anybody. Right. So, um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, you just get through it. And we, we've got to, we, we just have to talk it out. That's how we get through a lot of things. Like, and once we talk it out, like things become more clear and figure outable. And I think when we don't, that's when it all gets like, oh my God, like what, where's like, when is the end? Like, how are we going to get out of this? You know? Um, but for us, we just have to like really talk it out. And then, I don't know, that just helps us so much. I know. <laughs> so you know one of the things that i found working with my former partner was you know at, at some point somebody has to be the decision maker right because there's going to be things that happen that you disagree on and that there's no like okay you know somebody's gonna have to compromise so uh, yeah. i'm just curious who's who who's the one who like says okay well we need to make a decision and so here's the decision is it you or is it kate I would say it's, well, for different things, it's different. It's different for, for the, I don't know. I would say it's more me though, for most of things, because I'm, I do more of all the back end stuff and the day-to-day -day stuff. And some things like, I mean, she's even told me like, just don't even tell me, just do it. Like, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I know. Because, and some things I'm just like, I don't even, there's no reason to like go through all this with her. I'm just going to do it, right, you know? Right. Um, but if there's something that I'm really like, ah, I, I really don't know, then I will, then I'll rack her brain about it. But for most things, and then some things she, um, I don't know. Um, there's certain things that like are more her like department, like she's, um, she's more definitely more knowledgeable on the on the bike side of you know like which ones are we bringing in and how many and um what's what you know brand and what kind and um and i'm more on the side of you know the marketing and the sales and the well the marketing she's very good at sales i will say um but the the marketing, the website stuff, the, um, the scheduling of, of trips and our guides and, um, 
like teen emails, like, I don't know. So we both, I think, know where we, I don't know, shine at or where we're, we're best at. Sure. And I mean, I would be okay if, um, I say this now, but if she, you know, had to make a decision without me, and I mean, you know, I think we both know, like, you know, sometimes we just make mistakes too. And I mean, that's how we, you know, and even in that moment, we may have said like, we should definitely do this. And then we look back and we're like, well, that didn't work out. So. <laughs> <laughs> or in a life in business, right? Sometimes oh, you try yeah. stuff and it works. Sometimes <laughs> you try stuff and it doesn't. So <laughs> yeah, but without trying, you just don't know. So right. yeah. yeah. So, you know, let's talk, it's interesting, you know, we've, you've got a two-year-old and you've got one on the way. So how do you balance having a toddler and an, and almost a newborn, right? But so let, we don't know about that yet. So let's talk about the toddler, right? So you've got a two-year-old. How are you, how do you balance that with owning a business and working with your partner? I mean, it's like 24 seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I know. And especially this past year, I mean, we, cause he's in, he is in daycare back in daycare, thank goodness. Um, but he was, um, during the pandemic, we, he was out of daycare for six months. So that was, it was, you know, a blessing and a curse, I guess, because, you know, <laughs> it was like, we have all this time together. We never would have had, um, but also, you know, um, I, and I definitely realized like, I cannot be a stay at home mom. Like this does not work for me. You know, I need something else. Um, and I mean, so does he, I felt like, I mean, I feel like he, you know, really loved, you know, the interaction with the other kids and, you know, all of that. So, um, but I, you know, this past year was just again, really eye opening in that, um, I, since we were home um, and we didn't have, and, and that was another thing. I mean, we didn't have a lot of our trips, you know, we had to cancel or reschedule. So we weren't as busy anyway. So it kind of helped in that. Well, now I'm more, you know, watching like Asher at home. And, um, <clears throat> but whenever um, at about August, when he went back and we got, you know, a lot of things rescheduled, like it all just kind of worked out. And, um, but I mean, it's still, it's still challenging. And even this year, we, of course, opened another, like, uh, we opened a physical location um, where we live. So we're um, in Brown County, Indiana, which is Nashville, Indiana, the other little Nashville. Um, and we um, have a bike shop um, called Brown County Bikes. So we're the only full service bike shop down in downtown here. And um, so that was, I would say, a very stressful time when we were opening that. It was our plan to do that um, this year, but in the spring, and of course the pandemic hit, so everything kind of changed. Um, we weren't going to do it. And then, but luckily, you know, we were still able to do it in a different place, but ended up being working out better. Um, but even during that time, I mean, you know, now with employees and like figuring out like who's going to go into the shop and open or close and picking up Asher from daycare. And I think, you know, each week we kind of look at um, like what helps us again is just looking at our schedule and seeing, you know, who's going to do this, you know, like usually like one of us will do the morning drop off. The other one does the evening pickup, you know? Um, and, and then of course, yeah, I have now all these doctor's appointments cause I'm <laughs> getting really pregnant. So you just, yeah, you go to the, the doctor a lot when you're pregnant. So managing that, but we have really great employees, which I think really helps. And, um, so we're very blessed uh, that we have a great community here where we live. Um, but I think we just, each week we look at our calendar because it, it changes <laughs> every week. It seems like it's something else. Um, but I, I don't know. We like that too. Cause we like, you know, variety. Yeah. I guess. So let's talk about sort of how you, cause you know, this, you guys have a business that's like, you know, 
real life, you're in front of people, right? So when the pandemic hits, business stops really, right? Yeah, I mean, um, the so with, when the pandemic hit pretty much a year ago, um, we were actually in Arizona and usually the beginning of the year, our first um, couple events were out in um, Sedona, Arizona. And I did a wellness retreat. And then the next weekend we had a women's mountain bike clinic. Um, we barely got those in. And then I, I mean, I remember the day we flew home, it was like full on lockdown. Um, in Indiana that day. And, um, you know, so after that, we didn't do, you know, didn't have anything. Um, we had to, we canceled some, but we're able to reschedule some trips um, for the summer that we had in the spring. Um, and then I started a virtual, you know, online um, program. So I started an online outdoor wellness program. Um, and which, it's funny because I've I it was something I had been talking to Kate about that I'd always wanted to do some more online you know some videos and some you know online tutorials and things like that as a way to just add to our services and grow our business and and a way to just reach people I mean globally potentially you know so COVID kind of springboarded that um, because we weren't out doing a lot of trips. So I was home and I mean, I just, we put together a lot of videos and, um, and uh, you know, with yoga, breathing exercises, meditations, um, we're doing, we've um, started working on a separate one just for like biking. Um, and, and really all of it is how, you know, um, and relates back to the outdoors. Um, and, uh, Kate and I also were adjunct professors at Indiana university. So we do, um, some, or we usually do some classes out there. We will be doing them again in person, but, um, I was able to submit that course. So it, um, so it's an, it's an, I think they call it outdoor mindfulness. Um, so what's cool is, you know, we were able to then, you know, kind of build our services. Now we have some online programming and I'm offering it to um, some corporate clients that we have that we do some team building and leadership development for. So they're interested in, in adding that to their kind of health and wellness um, of their business. So, you it's know, amazing, you know it. <laughs> so, you know, I don't use the P word. Oh, um, okay. I talk about shifting and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you look at truly pivoting, right, think about basketball, think about putting something in a stationary place and with a string attached, right, as a pivot, you're still within about three feet of your original spot. Well, you know what, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't, you know, sometimes you've got to, you've got to be six feet away. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes what I found with my clients is that sometimes it was a slight shift. Sometimes it was a big shift right? And so the, the pivot didn't always work for everybody. So I stayed away from that word. But, you know, what's interesting too, to me is that what you said, right? I, I wanted to do this for a long time and we procrastinate, we drag our feet, we're, we get comfortable where we are. Yeah. And then something happens and we're like, oh crap, now we're forced <laughs> to do this, right? Um, exactly. And so I had that happen with several of my clients, right? It, it's it, I had a catering client who um, we had been talking about doing a continuity with program with jellies and jams and crackers and sauces and that kind of thing. And he kept dragging his feet, dragging his feet, dragging his feet. And then the, you know, when we started talking about the pandemic last year in January, actually, um, before it really hit here, I told him, I said, look, you guys, are, you, you got to think about this. Some of you are going to have to shift. And at that point he was like, I need to get this off the ground. Don't I? I'm like, yeah. And literally within a 60 day period, he had two new businesses to adjunct his catering business because he knew that the catering was going to essentially shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, he was one of the first companies here in Atlanta to do, you know, curbside delivery kind of thing. Um, just because he was ahead of that, ahead of the curve, right? People were like, Dan, how'd you know this was coming? And I'm like, did you think there was some bubble around the United States of America that every place in the world was going to get COVID but us? I mean, you know, you just had to look and see what was happening kind of thing. But um, yeah. 
And then, of course, you know, everybody, the, the online space then has become a, a huge place where, you know, offline businesses have come to. And, and uh, you know, th those of us that have been here for a while just are sort of chuckling because it's like, yeah, you know, how did you not know that this existed? But um, mm -hmm. it's funny how we get forced into things, you know. I know. Yeah. So, Danielle, tell me the best either business advice that you think you've ever gotten or best business advice that you want to leave to people who are watching and listening? I knew this was coming. <laughs> and yeah, I've been thinking about it. And um, I think um, one thing um, that my uh, friend of ours out in Arizona actually that has uh, told us, um, her name is Michelle Theory, and she she's like, adapt and overcome. And I feel like, that is something that I've always, I just always remembered her saying that. And, um, and that's just worked in life and business for me and Kate. And, you know, I think so many times, like with the pandemic or with anything that comes up in your business and life, you just have to figure out, you know, how can I, how do we, you know, adapt to this or how do we figure this out and how do we, and then like overcome it, you know? And, and in that way, you don't have time to complain, to get mad about it. You know, you just have to figure it out. Right. Um, another woman I love, and I even said it during this morning, but um, she has a book, uh, it's Marie Forleo called Everything is Figure Outable. And I say that a lot too, because I just think, you know, again, you, everything is <clears throat> figure outable. And if you just, when something comes up, you have to think about, again, like, how do we figure out this problem? Like, what is the solution? And again, in that way, to me, you don't waste time thinking about like, well, they did this or, you know, blaming somebody else or complaining about something that you, you know, have no control over. Um, and, so yeah, I think those phrases, you know, when I, when things come up or I'm stressed, like, I'm just like, okay, got to focus on like how we can overcome this, how we can figure this out. And that really has always helped me. So, yeah, yeah you know, it's interesting. I, I often tell people, you know, you've got, you, you have three choices when you face an obstacle or a challenge, right? You can do something, you can choose to do nothing, or you can stay where you are, right? You can keep doing whatever it is that you've been doing, which obviously doesn't work, but it's a, it's a choice. I mean, right? I mean, or you can do nothing. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who do nothing and just wait and see, but it's that piece of, you know, can, can you decide to take action to, to fix it or are you just going to throw up your hands and quit? Um, and, you know, I often tell the story that for me, you know, I've been in business for 30 years and people are like, wow, you know, and I'm like, it was a simple thing, you know, people draw a line in the sand and they say stuff like, well, if I haven't made this much money by this date, then I'm going to quit or I'm going to whatever. And, you know, for me, the fear in that was always, okay, if my date is January 1st, doesn't matter what year, right? And what if January 2nd was my day? What if the step I took on January 3rd was the one that like opened up the skies or, you know, produced the thing that I wanted? And so, I think for me, it's that fear of what if it was the next step? What if it was the next thing that I that I was going to do? And and uh, I think that's part of what's kept me from doing that. I'm just not going to quit. I'm just, you know I'm going to figure out a way to either go over, under, around, through, you know, or something because there is always a solution. And I think one of the things that a lot of people don't possess is this ability to problem solve. Um, mm -hmm. You know that critical thinking piece and. And that ability to problem solve, I think, is something that, you know, those of us who do it take it for granted, but it's 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 an uncommon thing, sort of like common sense, I think, these days. So oh yeah. We uh, talked a lot about that on our trips and on some of our adventures. We actually like take people's cell phones away. And so because so much we rely on our phone to figure it out for us, you know, like if it's like Googling it or whatever it may be. And I'm like, look, you don't have like any reception out here anyway. So, um, but being in the outdoors and, um, you know, we do different activities and 
challenges with them and um it it forces you to use your own mind yeah. and um and i think we've gotten you know lazy with that too and so problem solving is something we talk about a lot in the outdoors and 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 i think people again are like freaked out first not having their phone you know but um but then again we surprise ourselves in that like we're like no i can do this i can figure this out yeah. so yeah yeah I love that. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny how activity, whether it's an outdoor activity, just generically, or for me, it was always sports, right? But there's mm -hmm. so many lessons that you can learn in those things, right? In the independence, yeah. the problem solving, the the ability to overcome challenges. I mean, it just goes on and on. And for me, part of that is this thing of, you know, and again, I haven't been on one of your adventures, but you got to think ahead right mm -hmm. if you're thinking about where you are in this moment and there's a rocket 10 feet ahead of you you're screwed you're going you're, you're falling you're tumbling you're you know but if you can look ahead and see that rock then your brain has time to say okay am i going around it am i going over it you know how am i getting how am i getting past this obstacle um you know i often talk mm -hmm. about in sports you know i played softball in college and and that was a big part of my life but you know, where, whatever position you're playing, you've got to know what the situation is, right? How many outs are there? How many runners are there? What happens if the ball comes to me on the fly? What if it comes to me on the ground? What if it goes, you know, you've got, you, you play instantaneously all of these scenarios literally in the time between pitches. So what is that? 15 yeah. seconds, you know, 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, and then you can change. Yeah. In the yeah. next 15 seconds. And then you have a whole new thing of what, right. How to do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I, and I think all of those things are so transferable into what we do every day in our businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that that piece. But sometimes, again, I think having that different ad adventure or having something new or different that you're doing to spur that piece of your brain is the piece that so many of us don't always actively engage in. You know, if we work for companies where they make us do these things and we hate it while we're doing <laughs> it, right? But when we work for ourselves, we get to choose whether we do those things or not. So that's yeah. interesting. Good. So tell me, tell me what you think the biggest or or or, or the next sort of thing that uh, you know, whether it's a challenge or just the next issue that um, you know we as a queer community need to really be thinking about and dealing with. I that's yes. I knew this was coming too. I was thinking about it. I think. Um, I think there's a lot of different things. Um, for me, I think we um, we just we we can't get lazy with you know getting comfortable again with you know how far we've come or where we are today. I think we've still got to be um, out and proud if that's you know what or who you are in this you know time in your life um, or you know, I think we've just got to be really diligent and still um, work hard for, you know, equality, for our rights, for, um, you know, for the human connection. And um, I, um, you know, just think there's, there's so many different things, but I, you know, sometimes we don't always, uh, you know, like I do it too, you know, like, and, uh, but I, I want to make sure too, for me and for our businesses that, you know, we're promoting equality for all people. And, um, you know, that is, you know, like, and I'm always trying to ask the question to Kate and to our team and, you know, how can we be better? How can I, how can we, you know, promote more that we are open to all, to all the queer community, um, to the BIPOC community, you know, and how can we be better um, to make the world, you know, more equal, more happy, and um, just a better place to live in, you know? Um, so I think we've, we've still uh, got to keep asking ourselves that question um, uh, as, as people and as business owners and entrepreneurs and um, family members, you know, um, community members, um, and, you know, 
again, I know Kate and I have gotten lazy about it and, you know, like, cause she's always like, well, we live our lives every day. Like we're married and everybody knows. And, you know, and I'm like, but we can still be doing more, you know? Um, so I think we've just got to circle. And I just, we just circle back again and say, this is one of our goals. Like, how can we be more out that people know, like, you know, we serve all and we, we want people to know that. So, yeah. you know, just going back to that question and making sure your um, people are, you know, just being as the best you can be to, to serve, you know, our queer community and, and everybody involved. So. Good. Well, Danielle, this has been great. Give everybody sort of the, what's the best way if they're interested in reaching out to you and Kate and, and taking an adventure or, or getting more information, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah. So our, you can go to dnkpresents.com. Um, that's our, one of our websites. Um, email is danielle at dnkpresents.com. Kate at dnkpresents.com. You can always email us or, you know, we're on social media as well. Um, we have a local bike shop here. So browncountybikes.com is, is that website. If you know a woman who could use an adventure in her life, um, we're going to open up nominations for that soon. Um, since it's still, we're still in COVID this year, again, it's going to be a little bit different, but we'll be opening up nominations for that um, in the later spring. Um, and that website is liveadventurously.org. Um, but I think any of those ways, and you can find our contact info and find us and yeah, we'd love to connect and, um, and uh, yeah, reach out anytime. Great, great. Well, if you're looking for an adventure, check it out at uh, DNK, Pre DNK Presents, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, certainly reach out. I think it would be, be a fun thing. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll, uh, we'll put a group together out of this community and, 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 and do something with you guys. But I just want to say thank you for your time. This has been great. We've covered a lot of kind of different things with, uh, with a lot of different topics, but I love doing that. So uh, for those of you who are listening, um, as always, I hope you enjoyed it. If, you, if you've got comments and that kind of thing, certainly love a review on iTunes. Um, don't forget, there's the Facebook group, Queer Profits. There's also the page for this, which is Queer Profit Queer. Gosh, Diane, my, <laughs> my tongue gets tangled so much. Um, <laughs> Queer Profits podcast. It's the two Ps that always get me uh, on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And um, if you're interested in the free report, you can always go to queerprofits.com to get the three keys to growing your business fast, getting more clients and making more money. So as always, I'm your host of Queer Profits Podcast, Diane Conklin, where we are all about those three pillars. Don't forget, it's inclusion, it's community, and it's growth. And you certainly got all of that in today's episode. So Danielle, thank you again very much. We'll see you guys next time on the next episode.